Welcome here. My name is Sarah Therese and I'm a mama of five kids ages seven and under. I love feeding these kiddos and my husband and because of that, I thought I would share with you guys a week of dinners for my family of seven. I have a special place in my heart for the kitchen and creating and making food that is good for us, that is wholesome, and that just makes the entire house smell divine. I also know that sometimes making dinner can be difficult, just figuring out what to make, how to make it, and sometimes you can get into a rut and you need some new ideas. So I hope this video is helpful for all of you. I will be sharing five dinners that I made this week. And usually I do about five dinners a week. I will meal plan to make sure I have all the ingredients I need. And then I go to town. This first recipe is flatbread pizzas. The bread I was making in the beginning is a sourdough flatbread, and I can link that video down below. It is featuring a bunch of different uh, sourdough recipes that I love that you guys will probably really enjoy too. For these flatbread pizzas, I'm just gonna whip together a pizza sauce. This is something that is lighter than your average pizza sauce, but packs more flavor and is better for you. A lot of the pizza sauces you can get at the store are packed with sugar, glucose, and I've seen even some with corn syrup, and I don't think it's very necessary. So what I'm gonna do is take 796 mils of diced tomatoes, Combine it with three cloves of garlic, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and then I'm just gonna add in basil, parsley, pepper, and olive oil. About two tablespoons of olive oil. For the diced tomatoes, I did use my hand blender to make it the consistency that I want before adding in all my other ingredients. And here, I'm gonna start getting some toppings ready for the pizzas. When it comes to meal planning, I like to shop in my own pantry, fridge, and freezer first. For example, I could have totally gone to the store and bought an proper pineapple to put on my Hawaiian pizzas, but I realized all I had was crushed, so what I did was drain the juice and then use the crushed pineapple here to make Hawaiian pizzas. I'm using what I have, it's going to save me money in the long run, and it's also just a great way of cooking. It keeps you creative, it keeps you trying new things, and it always makes sure nothing goes to waste. So I have really gotten to the system of when I meal plan, I see the basis of all of my meals with the items I already have. Sometimes it works really great and sometimes I go, I need to go and have a huge Costco shop to kind of stock up some missing areas. But for the most part, when it comes to meal planning, I shop my stash first and then I can go from there. To the variety of preferences in the home, I make all the pizzas a little bit different. So I have a couple meat lovers using some local farmer sausage and smoked beef, as well as ham and pineapple because that is just such, such a classic and it's so good. And then I do just have a normal cheese for my kids that their favorite food, they would say is beige food. And then for myself, my pizza, I'm putting just goat cheese on. I have a bit of a problem with dairy, especially if I have it in heavy forms. It'll just give me a stomach ache and it bothers my baby also who is breastfeeding. I'm gonna bake these at 400 until they get kind of crispy. The cheese is really bubbly. This is quick and simple to do. And with these flatbreads, because they're smaller, the pizza slices are so great for little kids. 
So we're gonna slice them up. Believe it or not, I have never owned a pizza cutter. I have only ever used a knife. And I know every time I slice a pizza, I'm like, I gotta get a pizza cutter. And I always forget. So someone, come on. Whoever in my family, just buy me one when you're thinking about it, because I don't think about it. So we dined on pizzas that night. And then the next day at about 10 o'clock, I started getting some buns and soup ready. I was gonna be gone for dinner this day, but I wanted something that my family could enjoy while I was gone to an appointment with Edmund. So these are some sourdough buns that have been sitting overnight since yesterday. It's one two third cup of warm water, one cup of sourdough starter bubbly, two tablespoons of soft butter, a third a cup of cane sugar or honey, two teaspoons of sea salt, and four and a third cups of flour. I put all of it into my bread machine. It's my KBS bread machine, and I can link it down below if you're interested. It mixes and rises my bread. I really upgraded my bread machine after my other one died. After seven years of use, I went for the KBS one because it's not lined with Teflon, but ceramic, and I prefer that material over Teflon any day. So in the morning, my buns are all mixed, risen. I separate it into 12 little pieces and shape them into balls so they can rise while I put some soup together. is basically a meatball corn soup. I'm going to use pork and beef and season it heaven heavenly. That's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna season it heavily with seasoning salt and parsley and smoked paprika, liquid smoke. I'm gonna add in an egg too, and then I'm going to mix that together with my hand and start forming teeny tiny meatballs. I used to have a Danish soup when I was a little girl my more more would make it for me and it was so yummy and she made the meatballs so small and i don't have time to make the meatballs as small as she did but it does make a difference to make them a little bit smaller than your typical meatball i made two trays of these and baked them at 350 for 10 minutes and while that is happening i'm going to get the rest of my soup together Pot. I have some olive oil cooking up. I'm going to add in some garlic. I'm going to add in sweet onion. Stir it really well so it's nice and fragrant. I don't do recipes with soup unless it's my tomato soup because I'm usually just making something random on the fly and hoping for the best when it comes to soup. I'm going to add in some organic chicken broth and while that's boiling on the stove, I'm gonna make some cashew cream. It's about a cup of softened cashews with about a cup and a half of cold filtered water. I use this to cream and thicken my soups. It's a beautiful dairy-free option and it tastes magnificent. I'm gonna add in some corn and I'm gonna add in my meatballs here as well. It is delicious. It's starting to smell strong and garlicky and interesting. I always have the kids come over every time I make soup and they go, what does that smell? What are you doing? Because it just lets off this beautiful fragrance through the air. I'm gonna add in some marjoram, some thyme, some pepper, a bunch of sea salt. I'm gonna stir this really well and I will always add apple cider vinegar to all my soups because it gives it such a beautiful tang. I also let my buns rise for about three hours, bake them at 350 for about 25 minutes, brush the tops with butter afterwards to give it a bit of a satiny finish, and then I'm gonna serve myself soup for lunch. Since I won't be here for dinner, I can enjoy it now before I head out and do a bunch of my errands, but my family will be able to enjoy this for dinner time.
ever since I was a little girl, my favorite food has always been burgers. It could be any kind of burger. It is all my favorite. It is something I will literally enjoy weekly, and I like making my own at home from the buns to the patties because it's cheaper, it's better for you, and it tastes amazing. If you want to know how I make the burger buns that I'm doing here, again, I have that video. It also features my flatbreads, and it is linked below. What I'm doing is just combining all my ingredients into my bread machine, turning it on fermented dough. That's my cycle that I usually do. It runs for an hour and a half. It starts with a slow knead that you can see here. And over time, after about half an hour, my dough is looking like this. It's really elastic and beautiful. At the end of the cycle, I take it out and I'm ready to form these into my burger buns. Most of my dough, I don't flour my surface. Not all, but most. I find the bread itself bakes better. I can wield it in a much more uh, simple and elastic way. I like to keep my fingertips quite wet though, especially when I'm dealing with these buns, but I find that they just tuck and fold so much easier when all areas are very sticky. So this recipe will yield about eight buns. Uh, sometimes I'll make smaller burger buns, like slider buns. Sometimes I'll do hot dog buns. And sometimes depending on what buns I am making, I can make more or less of the buns themselves. For the patties, I have another mix of pork and beef. I'm gonna add in mustard powder, garlic powder, salt, parsley, seasoning salt, and an egg, as well as liquid smoke and more Worcestershire sauce. I know, I know there's a proper way to say it, but it's like at this point, I don't even want to know because it's kind of a running joke in our family. <laughs> so I just say it wildly. I'm going to knead this together. It's freezing cold and um, I'm going to actually arrange them onto these sheets here. This day I felt so sick and under the weather and I needed to simplify dinner. So what I'm doing is arranging four patties on each of these trays, so eight patties in total, and I'm going to bake them. This is actually one of my favorite ways to have a burger the flavor and the moisture you get from baking a burger is just phenomenal. The juices stay in there quite well and it's also easier than turning on the barbecue if you're just not feeling great like I was today. I'm gonna salt and pepper my burgers and stick them in the oven for three at 350 for 15 minutes. I also added some cheese and let that melt a bit, but look at, look at these. Oh my goodness, amazing, right? I also did bake my buns and these are ready to be eaten. Oh, I mean, I'm watching this back and my mouth is watering. I was so sick that day that I was only able to have <laughs> mayonnaise and a patty on my burger. So here I am showing you Kieran's, which looked absolutely delicious. When me and Kieran were first married, I made a list of meals and they were called poor man meals. They were meals that were super affordable and also just delicious. This is one of them. I'm going to make a cold tomato sauce. It's about 9 a.m. in the morning. You need to make it in the morning, let it sit on the counter and it's made just that much more incredible when you give it time to sit. It's 20, it's a 28 fluid ounce can of diced tomatoes with the juice, a quarter teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, 
a half a teaspoon of pepper, a half a tablespoon of basil, a half a teaspoon of oregano, about three cloves of garlic, and three tablespoons of olive oil. I also had leftover pizza sauce I decided to add to the mix. I'm going to cover this up. We have places to, to be, things to do. I'm gonna put this on the counter and come back hours later and get started on the rest of my dinner. I'm boiling a pot of water for some pasta. And while I'm waiting for that to boil, I'm just going to peel some apples for Edmund's baby food. So basically a poor man meal is an extremely affordable meal that was very crucial for us to have in the early years of our marriage when money was a little bit tighter. And this was one of them because it was pasta, beans, and a can of tomatoes, but it went a long way. It was affordable, but delicious. While my pasta is boiling, I'm going to add to a pan some green beans, garlic powder, smoked paprika, and if you're wondering what I'm cooking them in, it's actually leftover bacon grease from breakfast that morning. It's a delicious flavor you can add to your beans. It's a beautiful fat as well. I know a lot of people are kind of weirded out by things like butter or lard or bacon grease, but this family really enjoys those types of fats. You're just gonna add your tomato sauce on top of your warm pasta, beans on the side. I like putting Parmesan on top, and this is a super quick, very affordable, and wildly delicious dinner that everyone in your family will enjoy. for Friday. So Fridays always feel kind of special because it's pre-weekend and I like leaving us with a meal that is super yummy and that will also give us a lot of leftovers that we'll be able to eat for the rest of the weekend. I'm gonna make Greek food today and this is one of our favorites. So first, I am making cashew cream tzatziki. If you're one of my Patreons, I posted this onto my Patreon and so many of you were just messaging me being like, Sarah, this is incredible and I refuse to ever have store-bought tzatziki again and I was like I know you're gonna make cashew cream it's one and a half cups of soaked cashews two cloves of garlic two tablespoons of white vinegar a half a teaspoon of sea salt a teaspoon of mustard and a teaspoon of lemon juice you're gonna blend it all up and put it aside and then you're going to grate one long English cucumber you're gonna put it onto a tea towel, sprinkle it with about one and a half teaspoons of salt, and you're gonna let it sit for a little bit. Next, I wanna just get some yummy chicken going. I am kinda just eyeballing these ingredients. I'm doing olive oil, sea salt, red wine vinegar, lemon juice, smoked paprika, garlic powder, oregano, basil, thyme, and I'm gonna put that aside cut some chicken lengthwise as well and we're gonna let them marinate just for a little bit until Kieran is able to barbecue. The best salad in the world has no lettuce. In my opinion, it's a Greek salad. I love a Greek salad because my kids can eat it without choking on the lettuce. Because if your kids are like mine, they're not avid chewers. <laughs> and lettuce can be easily choked on, even if it's cut up small. So I really like doing a Greek salad because it's crunchy, they enjoy chewing it. I'm gonna do some cucumber, some red pepper, 
some tomato, some sweet onion. I usually don't put black olives in here because I only have one little person that likes black olives, but I will put in a lot of cheese in a bit here. Greek salad is also great because if you have leftovers, you can put it in the fridge and it doesn't go soggy. I'm gonna add in olive oil, lemon juice, nope, that's lime juice, and red wine vinegar, sea salt, oregano, basil, and just keep doing it to taste. And for my cheese, I'm adding in goat cheese. I love goat cheese. We're gonna put that back in the fridge and then I'm gonna finish up the tzatziki. I'm gonna take the cucumber, squeeze out all the juice. The salt helps to remove the extra moisture from the cucumber. Take that cucumber, put it into your cashew cream and stir it up. I'm adding in some dill. I like doing dry over fresh, to be honest, when it comes to tzatziki. You can also add in some green onion. I'm putting that in the fridge and then I'm going to get started on some flatbreads. So I had some leftover flatbreads still from when I made pizza. These keep really well and heat really well, so I'm gonna mix together some olive oil, parsley, and garlic, brush it on top of my leftover flatbread, and reheat it on my cast iron for a couple minutes on each side. Check this out. Molly took a bite of my flatbread, <laughs> so that's her piece. I like doing this because I don't have to make more bread than I'm already making, and again, I'm using what I already have. I'm gonna use scissors to chop it up into kind of pizza-like slices to make it go as long as possible, and then we are able to sit down and enjoy a delicious meal. Thank you guys for joining me for today's video. I truly hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.